the way he gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Hello. I am Pastor Sharon Davis, Assistant Pastor of Glory Worship Center, and I am blessed to be here today on WTJR to share with you the Word of God. I want you to do something right now for me. In your mind, I want you to shut me out and look for Jesus in the words that I speak to you. For it is by His Spirit that you are here by appointment today watching this show. Don't turn that channel. God has an appointment with you today. Leave your channel where it is and listen to what the Lord God would say to you today. First of all, my message is God is not mad at us. He's not mad at you. He, in fact, loves us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place because we all are sinners. God is not mad at you because you have failed in life. God is not mad at you because you've made wrong decisions. God is not mad at you because you haven't forgiven people. God is not mad at you because you have not sought him out. God is seeking you out today. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy burdened. Don't you feel the burden of life on your shoulders today? Don't you feel the heaviness in your heart? God said that's what the world does to you. The world mistreats you. I will never mistreat you. The Bible says, I, God said, I will never turn you away. I am not mad at you. I do not expect you to be able to live outside of sin unless you know my son Jesus as your Savior and Lord. I know that your flesh is weak. I know that it's hard. Even as a Christian sometimes, the enemy comes in like a flood and he just floods our life with things that hurt us and tries to destroy us. And it, sometimes in our flesh, we make wrong decisions during those crises. But Jesus said, I understand what you're going through today. He came from heaven, was sent, and willingly came out of God to the earth to become flesh and dwell among men. Because if he had not done so, no man could have ever been saved. With Adam, all was lost because he gave in to Satan's temptation and he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that made him Satan's property when he disobeyed God. With that, because Adam was blessed and Eve was blessed, they were to be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth. In other words, rule the earth, reign there, have dominion over everything. And that included the devil and all of his cohorts that had been cast out of heaven. They were never, man was never meant to be under Satan's control. So God did have a plan for this earth, when he made us in his image, image means we have hands, arms, like, uh, like God. We have eyes, we have a mouth, we can speak like God. Our minds, and at Adam's creation, man was created to think like God. That's how he named all of the animals that God brought to him. He knew God's mind, so he was able to come up with all the names for the creatures of God. And that's part of his dominion, part of his subduing the earth, ruling over it. We are supposed to be able to rule and reign in Christ Jesus on this earth. But we can't do that outside of Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord and us living our life through him. Today I want to read you some scripture to prove to you that God is not mad at us. In Romans 5 verse 6 through 10 is where I'll go, but I don't know how much of it I'll do at once. So let's just follow this. Romans 5, 6. For when we were yet without any strength, and that meant to save ourselves, because of Adam's sin, all men were born with a, na a nature to sin after that time. So they needed someone to save them. So it says, for when we were yet without any strength, 
In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. We first have to know that in, um, from Adam's fall, all men, women, and children are born ungodly, with an ungodly nature. That's why it's so easy for a child to throw a tantrum or learn to manipulate people to get what they want. We learn it because of our nature. It's our nature to want our own way. It's our nature to want to rule wherever we are because God made us after his own image and his likeness. We were made to rule. So we don't want anybody else ruling over us. That's why we are so rebellious when people try to tell us what to do. When we're outside of Christ. When we're in Christ, we should not be rebellious anymore unless someone's trying to get us to do evil rather than good. So... From that, we see that in due time, Christ did die for the ungodly. Thousands upon thousands of people were born and lived and died under sacrifice and law before Jesus ever came to die. But it was always God's plan that he would come. And it was always God, Jesus' will to do the will of the Father. And then verse 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even uh, dare to die. In other words, would you let your son die for people that were totally unrighteous and ungodly, that hated and murdered and, and did all the things that we think of as sin today? Would you give your son to do that? No, we would not. And scarcely would we even uh, adventure to give our sons for somebody that was a good person. There are people who do, they are in the service, and they, they fight for our country, and they give our lives for people here in America, good and bad. Those people sometimes give up their life for us, but they don't go there with the intent to die. They go there hoping to win and be in victory and come home safe. So they're not really laying down their life for somebody that's good on purpose. They're going to fight the battle to keep good. It's what they're after. But Jesus came to save those that were ungodly. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus didn't wait till we start being good. He didn't wait. He came when we were yet sinners and hung on that cruel cross. The worst death anybody could suffer, he suffered on that cross for our sins. So that's where we are today. We're under the ability and the blessing to be saved from our sins so that we do not have to go to hell. Jesus, when he came, he said of himself, he always said exactly what the Father said. He didn't say anything that he wanted to say except what the Father he heard him say. That's what he repeated. He also said, I only do what I see my Father do. So by being filled with the Spirit, he could see the Heavenly Father. He was no more different than us because we in the Spirit see God. We have to believe by faith in our inner man that God is real. Jesus walked that walk with God in such a way that he absolutely never sinned, even though he came in the flesh and was tempted in every way that we are. Do you think the world wasn't bad when he lived? Do you think there was no sin? You think there was no temptation? They were under the rule of a harsh Roman government who were cruel. There were thousands that hung on crosses and died under the Romans, not just Jesus. And another thing I want you to understand, that in the Garden of Gethsemane, before Jesus went to the cross, it says in Matthew that he prayed to the Father three times during the night before his death. Father, if there's any way, any other way that this cup can pass from me, that I don't have to go to that cruel cross and die in that manner, then let it be. But not my will be done, Father, but yours. And God knew there had to be a blood sacrifice of a perfect man to win back what the first perfect man lost when he sinned. And Jesus did purchase all of that back for us. Adam was never to be sick. 
His body was never to wear out. He was to completely cover this earth with his own seed, children after him, after him, after him, and live forever, eternally. He lost that when he sinned. When he turned and disobeyed God, he gave that away, not just for himself, but for all mankind. So Jesus came for that purpose, to win all of that back for us. Now, let's look at this. Much more than once, or much more than, being now justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you're not justified if you're not saved. If you have not had a blood offering received from Jesus, then you're not born again. You're not saved and you're not going to heaven. God did the first sacrifice in the Garden of Eden. After Adam and Eve sinned, the first blood sacrifice was offered. He killed animals and made clothing covering Adam and Eve. Today, when you accept Christ, Jesus' blood will cover you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. There'll be no more sin on you. No more sin. And you will be free and you will be cleansed under that blood. And besides that, he bought back everything else that man lost. And you receive that too when you receive Jesus Christ. Let's read verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, his only begotten son. Remember that, it's the only son God ever had until... You'll see later. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Because God didn't leave him dead, he raised him from the dead. He's a resurrected living Savior. And now he sits at the right hand of God, the Bible says, and makes intercession for you and me every day, all day long. And it's, he said, when I go, it's, it's really important I leave this earth to his disciples because when I get there, if I stay, the Holy Spirit can't be sent to you to help you live this sinless life that we can live if we trust God and follow after the Spirit only. But he said, if I go, the Spirit can come. And he will lead you into all truth. He will guide you and direct your life. But first of all, you have to come under the blood covering of Jesus Christ. You have to realize, first of all, you must believe and be born again, the Bible says. In Romans 3.23, all of us that were born into sin, a sin nature. Now in John, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but by him. You can't come any other way. You can't go through Allah. You can't go through Muhammad. You can't go through crystals and the new era beliefs. You can't come any other way except by the cross through the blood of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins to come into the Father's home and into his family and into his kingdom and never be able to get to heaven without doing that. It's the only way, Jesus said. So you must believe that he is the Son of God. First of all, that he came from God to save mankind. Hallelujah. That is good news, people. That is good news. There's a way out of all that heaviness, all that burden that you carry. Even the own guilt of sin that you have upon you, that shame. God's saying to you, I'm not mad at you. Don't be ashamed to come to me. Don't be ashamed to admit that you're a sinner because all men were born into sin. I know who you are and yet I love you and gave my son for you. Already I've given him. It's already done. I'm just asking you to come to me. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. That's what God says to us today. I loved you so much. I spread my arms this wide on a cross with my son hung there for your sins were on him. So you will not have to pay for those sins yourself if you accept my son as payment for your sin. Because that's why he went to the cross. If you don't receive him on the cross and see him as dead and going to hell, when he was in the grave three days, he went down into the pits of hell, the Bible says, and he won the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from the enemy of God, Satan himself. Satan no longer has any power. It says Jesus, when he resurrected, made an open show of them. Everybody knew that the devil was defeated because death could not hold our Savior. 
now because of him and if we're in him death has no hold on us we don't ever have to be afraid of dying isn't that good news? That's the one thing that most people fear most in life. That's why they're afraid of snakes. That's why they're afraid of spiders. They're afraid of heights because they're afraid of dying or being hurt physically. Jesus took that for us on the cross and got rid of that fear of death. We can receive that as freedom for our souls too today when we accept Christ. Okay, and in Romans it says that through grace, God's grace, we're saved. And understand that you're a sinner. That's the first thing you have to do is admit, I am a sinner. I'm lost. I need someone to save me. Understand that about yourself today. Because every man, woman, and child that's born is born into a sinful nature because of who has control of this world at this time in the air. Satan is their father if they're not in Christ. Now... For all have sinned and come short of the glory or the righteousness or rightness of God, the purity of God. We've all fell short of that. And we still in our flesh fall short of it during the day ourselves. And we, we don't have to stay there though. That's the good thing. When you're in Christ, you just say, Father, I realize what I just said. I realize what I just did was not pleasing to you. I ask you to forgive me, Jesus. And it's gone just like that instantly. You get up and you walk on. You do not walk in condemnation because of what you've done. Even as a Christian, you do not let those things beset you anymore. You're not guilty in Christ. You have nothing to be ashamed of. He tells us, come boldly into my throne room as my children. Come and visit me. Come and have communion with me. Come and fellowship with me. Just come and talk to me like you would talk to anyone else about your problems. I know what they are. But I want you to come in faith knowing when you come in here, you can leave with an answer. Because I have already taken care of all your problems. There's not anything you need that I don't have. There's not anything you need that I'm not willing to give you. There's nothing that you need that you have to beg for. You just have to come and love me and fellowship with me. Because I've already given you the full package of salvation. But you now must pick it up. And come to me and receive what you need. And the only way you can do that is if you know this word. What does the Father God say that I can have in this book? Everything he says I can have. There's not one lie in this book. He's not a man that he should lie, the word says. The devil's the father of lies. And God has no part with him, believe me. And he has no part with God. Hallelujah. In John 12, verse 3... We see Jesus said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now this is right before he goes to the cross. The judgment of this world is come. It's now. This is why he came. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. That's Satan. He was given the principality of this heir at one time. Once Jesus died, he's not anything to do with our lives anymore. It has no power over us. It's been taken away from him. All the earth has been taken away from him. And God has us here as Christians to take back the territory that the enemy has stolen and kept from the Christians. Kept from God in a way. Okay, now, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. That was Jesus speaking. What did he mean, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me? He was telling about his death on the cross. He was saying, when they lift me up, if people will look to what I did for them on that cross, and will remember that I am the Son of God sent by a holy God who loves us and cherishes us, and that he let me go down into the pits of hell for you and pay your payment of death and hell. And I came back up resurrected, completely healed, completely whole, completely free. And I just shut Satan's kingdom down. Really, literally, Satan only has any rule that man gives him. Because at that time, Jesus took it back. Now he's trying to get us to get in the word and realize who we are and that we can rule and reign here in the earth again like Adam was supposed to in the beginning. So we need to know that Jesus is our answer and that he was lifted up on that cross. John, in John verse, or chapter 3 verse 16 he said, Jesus said, or God said, 
For God so loved the world, he loves you, that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Isn't that wonderful? It means the day that you begin believing that Jesus Christ was sent to die for you, the day you receive him. Now remember, devils believe in him. They know he's real. But when I say believe in him, it means you are ready to say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. And Jesus, I believe with my heart that you are the son of God and that you did die for my sins. And if you're already saved and you don't know that you're free in Christ, he wants you to say today, Jesus, I understand that you're my savior. And that means my whole life. I understand that you gave me your peace, which is nothing lacking, nothing broken, nothing missing. My life is complete. Show me how to walk in it. He's saying to you, you've made mistakes. There's no failures in me. You get up, you dust yourself off, and you come on, son, because Jesus is already praying all day long, covering our sins. And he, the Holy Spirit will say to you, get rid of that in your life. Repent of that. Do it quickly and get up and move on in Jesus. And today I want you to understand that as we look to Christ as our Savior and Lord, he is right there waiting because it's already prepared from the foundation of the world. It said that Jesus was the re or sin was the very reason that Jesus came to the earth. By faith, we can be free from sin. By faith, you can enter into a new kingdom. The Bible tells us that he removes us when we accept him from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son, the kingdom of light. So when we walk from that day forward, we walk our life out by the faith in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He's the one that does for us what we need done. He just says, you get to know me in here and begin to lie, act like me, mimic me, make, make sure you do what you see me do, just like I did the Father. Say what you hear me say. Don't say things opposite of that. This is my testament to you. It's my covenant to you. It's my last will for your life. It's the last thing that I said, those words in there, before I left this earth. And I've given those to you to guide your life. And I want you to come to me in prayer and fellowship. And just spend time listening back. And you'll hear things come up in your mind that shouldn't be in your life or you'll hear something come up in your mind that says I hear you Lord how do I do that he'll be telling you to do a certain thing or to go a certain place nowhere in my heart or my mind ever did I believe or even think that I would be a messenger of God that I would be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ but he made me to be that. He chose me to be that. He's chosen you to do a certain work for him. But every one of us are to be ministers of the word of God. Once you get this in you, you won't be able to keep quiet. You'll want to tell people Jesus saves. Jesus loves you. He does not hate you. He's not mad at you. He's laid down his life so that you could be free. Come to him. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. That does not mean there will not be days all kinds of problems come along. Because there will. We're still in this world. Even though we're not of this world in this kingdom. We're not held to the standards that this world is held to. They're not our money system. God is our money system. We have a father who has all riches and glory. We should never be begging for food. That's not God's promise to us. And it's not God's promise to you to walk with your head down and ashamed in life or feeling beaten and beat up. That's not God's promise to you. Jesus said when he was leaving, I leave my peace I give to you. Not peace like this world has, but a peace that's beyond all understanding I give to you. His peace is perfect there's nothing lacking in our life and nothing missing as long as we get in that peace and hold our peace. The world will bring us problems that makes us want to release our peace and we don't see a way to keep the peace. But God is in you and he'll help you. He'll bring it up in you. No, I'm not going to think like that. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to stay in the word. I'm going to do what the word says. I'm going to follow after Jesus. 
with all of my heart. That's what you have to do. And to be born again is so easy. It's just admitting you're a sinner and you need a Savior. And then crying out, believing that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sins and he rose again on that third day. The Bible says in Romans, if you will confess with your mouth and believe with your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. That's how simple it is. Man kind of makes it hard sometimes. Tries to pe preach hellfire and damnation on you. Well, all men were already lost and condemned. Jesus said, I didn't come into this world to condemn the world. I come to save it. The world was already condemned from Adam's time to now. It was condemned. But once Jesus came, he said, once I got here and died on that cross, I came to save the world. I'm not out to condemn anyone. I'm out to love them and give them a life of joy and peace and happiness and blessing so that you can be a blessing to other people. I want you to establish my covenant in the earth by saying, I am a son of God and taking the word to others. That's what he expects of us once we're saved. And you'll want to. And you won't want to sin anymore and you'll be sorry when you do. You'll be immediately sorry and you'll want to repent. So I ask you right now, every one of us, that's watching today or that's anywhere. I don't know where this is going out to and I don't know when it's going to be on the air, but I do know this. Jesus has set the appointed time for you for he said today is the day of salvation. Today is your day. Don't leave that television set without saying the sinner's prayer. You may not get another chance to hear the word of God and I personally don't want you to go out into the world lost or into hell lost, eternity lost. And neither does Jesus. He came so you wouldn't have to. Would you bow your head with me now, please, and say this prayer. Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. I realize that you're the Son of God and that you came and died for my sins and paid the price for me that I could be free and saved. And I know you're the Son of God. I know you rose on the third day. And I'm confessing with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. Come and be Lord of my life. Lead me. Lord means lead. So let him lead your life. Holy Spirit, come and baptize me in the Holy Ghost and fire. For it is a gift of God and I need it to walk in this earth. I thank you right now, Jesus, for saving me. I am washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. All of my sins are gone. And they're gone forevermore, cast into the sea of forgetfulness. Thank you for loving me, Lord God. And thank you for not being mad at me. And people, he will not be mad at you anymore. Because he never was. He loved you. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's me. Is the way he gently takes me by the hand. This week on Community Calendar. Gospel gig, Saturday, September 1st at 6.30 p.m. Anticipation, a gospel trio, and Piano Joe, Ron Centers, and Bill Lewis at the Detroit Christian Church, Detroit, Illinois. For more information, call 1-217-285-5521. Clown training, September 28th through the 29th, costs $6.